so as I mentioned here, we are um, basically going, well, we're at the transition point between what I consider is the soft quantum mechanics end and the real quantum stuff. And um, as, you know, as it works out, the probably the most fabulously bizarre experimental results that, that we'll maybe discuss this whole semester, or at least as I learned it, the most fabulously bizarre results come from this exact experiment, which I think can really only be explained as God's April Fool's prank on us. So we're going to start with this. Um, actually, we're going to start with one more thing. Um, I have a, I, I, I was thinking about from, from our last lecture, we, we introduced the Bohr model of the atom. And one of the, one of the things that, that um, has always kind of, it was difficult for me when I was learning it, and it's also difficult for me to kind of like explain it, but the fact that the, the hydrogen atom, that the proper way to view the energy levels of the hydrogen atom are as negative energies, like you, you go below zero. So I've thought about it a little more, and I do want to get, kind of give a clarification of why, and it's, it's actually it will be directly relevant for when we return to it here at the end of today. Um, so we're gonna go through the double slit experiment after I make that correction. Uh, we'll introduce de Broglie's hypothesis, which, as I mentioned last time, this was entirely his PhD thesis, <laughs> and it was it, it formed a, an absolute cornerstone of the entirety of quantum theory. So I just I, I can't even imagine putting myself in the, in the eyes of a 25 year old who's teaching Einstein how, how quantum physics works. It's literally what it was, um, and then so that directly leads to a much more fuller. Um, uh, uh, a much more fruitful avenue to approach the Bohr model. And so we're going to delve into the mathematics of it. And so I, I think the, the, the Bohr model that a lot of people learn in, say, chemistry class or, or maybe in, you know, a, a introductory physics or something like that, where you describe the Bohr model as, like, you, you talk about the words that he explained. The, 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 the bigger picture is that Bohr not only described what happens or what he thought happens, but he gave a fully mathematical explanation of it. And that's what we're going to get into here. Um, I will also give the caveat. This is always, I, I think, the most difficult lecture for me to give. And I don't know whether it's because I don't understand it or whether it's just because there is a, a good deal of complexity in it that, that's really, it's tough to make a straight line and explain A, B, C, D in a linear fashion. So, um, if, if, if you feel as we go through it, if it feels like things are a little bit like disparate and it's tough to connect the dots, <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, but I'll try as well as I can to put uh, frame everything in a coherent fashion so that we come out of this actually understanding more about the, the Bohr model than less, which sometimes happens for my, myself too after this. So um, I, I really hope that we can get through all this. It's entirely possible that some, some of this will have to relegate for, for the beginning of class uh, next week.